Today, we're going to be taking a look at this, a ultra lightweight 5 inch quad frame from Flyfish RC called the Tony 5. Now, in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the frame kit, the motors I'm going to use, we're going to go over my build, and then at the end, I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Now, just to be clear up front, this is actually going to be a two part video. The actual flight of this frame is going to come a little bit in the future, but I do talk about that a bit more at the end. But if you were looking to find out how it flies, you're not going to get that from me today. But what I am going to do is show you what this frame is all about. Okay, so what we've got is their new Tony 5 frame kit, as well as their flash motors. These are available in 2900 kV as well as 1800 kV, and they're 2204 in size, and they're ideal for this 3.5 inch, 4 inch size of frame. Now, looking at the frame kit, first of all, it comes in this nice bag. Flyfish RC have been doing a really nice job, actually, with how they send their products out. They generally include everything you need as well to get up and running. But we'll have a look at what you get with this one as we find our way in. It's just a little bit sealed there. So, in the kit, we've got the Tony 5 frame, which is there with all of the parts in. We'll look at that in a second. We've got some Flyfish RC stickers. Always nice to see some stickers included with something. There's two cable ties, very nice. We've got two grippy battery straps. These are the Flyfish RC labeled ones, and they are the ones with that sort of rubber interweaved grip on it, which is nice as well. We've got some battery grip pads. Very nice to see they've included that with the kit as well. Some printed TPU parts as well as all of the other frame pieces in this other bag. And if we just get them out, we will find whole batches of screws, which we'll take a look at as we go through the build. Some silicon inserts for the camera on the frame. We've got our CNC parts there, the silicon inserts there, screws, nuts and bolts, as well as some standoffs there as well. Now. There is pretty much everything we need here to get this put together. I'm not sure if we've got flight stack standoffs included. Some frames do, some frames don't. I'm not seeing them included with this, but we'll take a look at that as we move through. Now, what's really interesting about this Tony 5 frame is it is designed to allow you to build yourself a sub 250 gram 5 inch quad. Now, you may have noticed earlier that I mentioned using it with these Flash 2004 motors. This sizing is usually what you would choose for something like a 3 or a 4 inch quad. However, you can also use these on an ultralight 5 inch like we've got here with the Tony 5. Whilst this quad is also lightweight, it isn't giving up on features because it is fully O3 and digital compatible. And when I say fully compatible, you can use the words optimized because it does include an ISO isolated camera mount on the front and we'll take a look at the mounting options for the digital VTX systems a little bit more later on. Now to get the weight down on this they do recommend using it with a 20 by 20 mini stack as well as keeping the other components to a minimum as well and we'll take a look at that a bit more as we move through the build. Now just looking at the thickness of some of the plates and the arms if we take a look at the bottom plate first we're coming in at 1.8 mil on that. If we look at the top plate we're coming in at 1.99 which is 2 mil and then the back or the mid plate 1.93 very similar if we then look at the arms you can see they're definitely thinner than we'd find on some quads and they're coming in at 4 mil now this as i've said is designed to be an ultra lightweight frame they're saying it all comes in at 57.4 grams it's made from t700 carbon fiber plates and it is a true x design as well it's not a dead cat so that means you're probably going to have props in view but we'll take a look at that a bit more later on so the next thing I'm going to do is put this frame together. I'm not going to do it as a step-by-step -step guide in this video, but I probably will record it and I'll put it down as a high speed and then I'll come back and talk you through various parts as I move through.
Okay, now I've got to this stage here and overall everything is really straightforward, but there is something I want to mention. In the instructions, it mentions about putting screws here which are 2x8s. However, I didn't have 2x8s in my kit. I've got 2x9s. When I had a quick look on the website, it did show 2x9s included and no 2x8s, so that's what I've used. However, it is worth remembering that they are basically holding screws before you put your flight stack in because your flight stack is going to mount on top of that 20x20 point. As a result of that, you're going to need some longer screws for mounting your flight stack, whilst they do include up to 20 mil in the kit. For my flight stack that I'm going to use, and we'll look at this a bit more later on, it isn't going to be long enough, and I'm going to actually need 25 mil screws to reach the top of the plates rather than 20s. Now, with regards to fitting ear units in this, if we take a look at an 03 one, you're going to have no problems with camera cable length, that's for sure. You can see that one there goes all the way up to there, and you can fit an 03 ear unit in the back, no problem. You could stick it down, or they do have holes included in the frame, and they actually include screws with this kit for this as well. You can actually see that they include 5M1 6x12 screws. They're included there and they will allow you to mount that O3 ear unit directly into this frame holding it in place. Things are obviously going to be a little bit tight with regards to your flight stack but that's why they recommend that 20 by 20 small one but overall there's plenty of space here to get an O3 style ear unit in the back. You're going to be able to get an avatar ear unit in there, a HD0 ear unit in there, no problem at all. Obviously any of the ones that would stick out a bit more at the side you're going to have to watch but overall you shouldn't have too many problems. Okay, so I've put the top plate on and now you can see the frame is finished. Now this is incredibly light. We'll get it on the scales in a minute and have a look what it's like, but I have to say it just feels light as a feather. I really like what they've done here. I think this is a really interesting frame, bringing that ultra lightweight to a five inch. It is O3 optimized, as I've said. You've got those aluminium standoffs at the front with those silicon inserts. You've got two packs of inserts included with it. So we've got inserts for 20 mil camera, yellow and black, and and then inserts for 19 mil cameras as well. Now, alongside the screws they included for putting the frame together, we've got spears. So we've got those DJI 03 ones, which I mentioned earlier, but we've also got some M27s, which there are 16 of. Not sure what they're for, but there's 16 of them. We've got M218s. They're going to be for your flight stack in the middle. And there's also a set of M220s there as well. Again, for the flight stack and then you've got some m25 screws too again not sure what they're for they're giving you extras for mounting that heat sink on the back as well as all of the other things that you might want to fit okay so just taking a look at the weight if we place the frame on on its own we are at 55 grams obviously you can add a couple of extra grams for the silicon mount so if i toss them on we're at 58 and there's two pairs in there so we're virtually coming in bang on on that 57 grams which they've said. Now as I've said you can pair this frame with the Flyfish RC 2004 motors and what we're going to do next is take a closer look at these. Now as I've said these motors are available in two different sizing, 2900 kV for 4S and 1800 kV for 6S. We'll take a look at the 6S one first of all, I don't want to get these two mixed up because I think they are the same colour and identifying them could be a bit of a challenge otherwise. When you get them, they come in this nice little box and you get some screws for mounting them in the bottom and then the motors themselves come in these bags. Flyfish RC tend to put all their stuff in these little plastic bags. I prefer to see stuff in paper just for recyclability point of view. However, we're not gonna give them any negatives for that. Now, these, as I've said, are 2004 KV. They are their flash motors. We've got the bells there. We've got the windings underneath, and then we've got the cables attached as you would expect. Now, weight wise, if we just get them on the scales, we'll just check what they are coming up as. Each motor is coming in at 16 grams, which is pretty 
good. They feature a uni bell design, as you can see there, with the machined aluminium along the top. They say they're fitted with a high-strength titanium alloy shaft, which is in the middle. They have 220-degree high-temperature resistant copper wire. I'll get in a bit closer to show you the windings as well, just so you can see them. They're fitted with NMB imported bearings, as well as N52S H magnets. Pretty much everything that you would expect to find on a modern motor. They do say it has a thickened bottom motor plate, and actually you can see that there, it is quite thick. And overall they say high precision manufactured, and they're saying the weight comes in at 16.69 grams. Now, just looking at the length of the wire on the motors, if I just stretch it out, we're talking 150 mil, pretty much exactly what you would expect to find on a modern motor. Now, if we just take a look at the 2900 kV, I don't think it's going to be really any different to look at externally, but we will do it just in case. They are all the black ones, so again, I could mix them up, so I do need to be a bit careful, although they are labelled, so I could soon work it out. Um, yeah, pretty much exactly the same. What I think I'll do is I'll just go in a bit closer and give you a look at the windings as well as the magnets. Okay, so this is the 2900 kV, just showing you the windings there. They look really nice, single strand, really nice and tidy. The machining on the aluminium looks good as well, no complaints whatsoever. Moving over to the 1800 kV now, exactly the same. Everything looks nice and tidy. You've got some heat shrink tube there where the wire comes around and then nicely tubed and glued there. Really, there's not a lot more to show you other than that. Just like all of the other motors I've seen from Flyfish RC, zero complaints at all. Quality looks really good. So they should make a good option for this quad. Now, with regards to what kind of build I want this to be, I haven't actually made my mind up yet. I was talking about this on one of my recent live streams. We could go for an all-out lightweight, five-inch sort of freestyle build, but really this quad isn't going to stand up to any real form of punishment. Or do we go down the road of doing an ultra-lightweight, long-range five-inch build? Now, with regards to the electronics choices, my initial plan was to go for this Speedy B stack. This is the F405 Mini. However, this comes in, oops, dropped it there. This comes in at 23 grams. I could, though, save a bunch of weight by going for an AIO, which is about 12, 13 grams. Although, if I pair this Speedy B ESC with one of these smaller FCs with the AT32, this can come in at about 15, 16 grams, checking it on the scales. And that is getting me pretty close to what I would get with an AIO. And that's probably what I'm going to go with. With regards to the digital video system, I haven't fully made up my mind yet because O3 would be great. You get that fantastic image quality. However, that isn't to say you couldn't use something like Avatar HD on one of their naked VTXs or HD Zero. If I was building this for out and out as light as possible, I would be going for one of the naked HD Zero builds or the naked uh, Avatar HDs. Yes, you can tear down the O3 ear unit into a super naked build as well, but I'm not sure I fully need that in this build and I'm leaning more towards HD0 or Avatar HD. For you out there, it's gonna come down to what video system you choose. I'll probably go for a naked Avatar HD ear unit to try and get the best possible image quality. Okay, so I ended up going with HD0. We ended up going with the Nano 90 camera for this build, and I'm gonna see how that goes, and I'll probably play with this a little bit more as time goes on. Now, I did choose that Speedy B flight stack in the end just to save myself messing around, and you can see we've got everything in there nicely, and I'm using the Whoop Light VTX on the back. Okay, so the build is now complete. We've got everything installed, including props. Now, I've done all the electronic setup and testing. We've changed the Express LRS receiver that I had installed. The first one I put in didn't actually work. I put in like an old RP1, and I think it's one I've burned out in the past that was laying in the bottom of the box. So I've ended up going with the Radio Master RP1, which is my go-to receiver pretty much for most of my builds. Now, I've done the 
configuration in beta flight, I have flashed this ESC with Blue Jay. That way we're going to have bidirectional D shot as well. And overall, it's ready for its first few flights. I've done all the usual configuration. So really, it's good to go. Now, as for weight, as you see it here, basically this is the quad ready to fly. We only need to add a battery. And if we just take a look at it on the scales, we're coming in at 182 grams. That's 182 grams for a five inch quad, which is quite interesting to say the least. And I'm really looking forward to how this flies. Now that is where I'm going to end this today because I've got all the configuration to do and then I've got to try and find some weather to be able to fly because we're in the middle of winter here. What I am going to do though is follow this up with a second video. I have the second video to come on the Chris Rosser frame and then the second video to come on this. I'm sorry there are time delays between me doing this bit and that bit. I cannot change the weather here in the UK. Unfortunately, I can only do things at the speed I can do when the weather allows me. So. As you've seen, that is the Tony 5. Overall, my final thoughts on what I've seen so far is it's a very interesting frame. I'm looking forward to taking it for a fly. Absolutely not a frame for Bando or crashing, but really interesting to be able to build yourself an ultra lightweight five inch quad. If you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to this frame, the kit itself, the motors in the description. I want to say a big thank you to Flyfish RC for sending this one over. If you'd like to order yourself one, the links are there below. Finally, I just want to say, if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. It's only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to make videos like this in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.